the last talk for today would be given by Anton Eisenberg. Uh, and he will talk about the shapes of Hermitian matrices and topology of the corresponding as a spectral manifolds. Please, Anton. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, yeah, I hope you can hear me quite well. Yeah, tell me if this is not the case. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, uh, wonderful. So yeah, thank you for inviting me for this conference. Yeah, unfortunately I cannot attend it in person uh, because well, last time in Sochi it was quite nice surrounding. Uh, but anyway, so now I will be uh, speaking head uh, inside inside your screen. Uh, my talk will be about shapes of Hermitian matrices and topology of the corresponding isospectral manifolds. Uh, I think that you can follow my slides. Uh, let me just uh, send them in chat. Um, the reference, you can click them. Um, so they, they are kind of, kind of made as a website. Uh, but anyway, so this, this is a joint work with um, uh, several people with Viktor Matejevich, of course, with Vlad Cherepanov, with Mikia Masuda, Grisha Solomadin, and Kostya Sorokin. So this talk is based on several, uh, actually it is based on several works. I will comment on which works, which parts are based. Uh, so uh, let me uh, formulate the problem. Uh, so the main uh, the main object that I'm going to consider is uh, the square matrices of some form. By a form, I mean that uh, I uh, consider Hermitian matrices of size n, in which some of diagonal elements vanish. So I put zeros at some places of a matrix, and uh, these places are off diagonal. Uh, and the best way to encode such shape of a matrix is by graph. So uh, assume that we have a graph on the vertex set uh, M, and then I can consider a matrix uh, which has, which has uh, zero at all positions IJ, which are not edges uh, of this graph. Uh, and I consider the set of all such matrices. Uh, so some examples. Uh, for example, if I take graph like this, uh, this star graph, uh, we have edges 1, 2, 1, 3, and 1, 4. And this means that I allow some entries at positions 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. And I also allow some entries at, uh, at the diagonal. But all other entries, so these uh, voids here are zeros. Uh, so this graph defines me this shape of a matrix. Uh, this is one example. And another example, uh, which you can consider is of course the full graph, which corresponds to full matrix. So if you consider a full graph, then uh, there is no condition, th th there are no zeros. Well, th there may be zeros, but uh, we do not put any restriction. So this is just any Hermitian matrix. Mm, so this, this is, uh, another example, and of course, if you take a path graph, uh, then you will have a matrix of three diagonal shape because we have uh, entries one, one, two, two, three, and three, four, and we also have diagonal uh, entries, but all other entries are zero. So these path graphs define three diagonal matrices. And another interesting thing, another important example is what happens when, when you take a cycle graph. Uh, the cycle, cycle graph determines, uh, well, somebody calls this Jacobi matrices. Uh, well, I, I, I prefer to call them periodic three diagonal matrices. They look like three diagonal matrices, but they have uh, one, well, well, two additional entries in the corners. So they correspond to this edge one pi. Um, so the, 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 there is such class, important class of uh, uh, of examples, and um, of course all these examples, uh, these the spaces of corresponding matrices, uh, are not very interesting from topological point of view because these are just flat spaces. 
we are considering Hermitian matrices. So, so they are kind of uh, this entry and this entry, for example, are conjugate and we have some real entries at the diagonal, but, but essentially this, this space M gamma is not very interesting. It is just a flat space. It is just R, uh, R of some dimension, some real vector space. Uh, but things uh, become more interesting when you um, put some condition on the spectrum of such matrix. So um, let us fix some simple spectrum. So for me, a simple spectrum is just a choice of uh, real numbers uh, which are pairwise distinct. So of course, since we are speaking about Hermitian matrices, their uh, eigenvalues are always real numbers. And I put a restriction that I only consider uh, simple spectra. So this means that all eigenvalues are pairwise distinct. And I fix a spectrum. And then I consider the set of all matrices of given shape, which have this given spectrum. Uh, so in formula, it looks like this. So I intersect uh, this space of gamma shaped matrices with, with this space of uh, matrices having, having given spectrum. Uh, and uh, this is kind, kind of a simple argument which follows from Sartre's lemma that uh, if you take this lambda uh, generic enough in some general position, then uh, this intersection, this M gamma lambda, will be a smooth uh, submanifold, a closed smooth submanifold inside, for example, inside this M gamma. Uh, yeah, this is just because, because, because of the argument of general condition. If lambda is general enough, then the intersection, this intersection is transversal. So, uh, so we get some closed, a smooth closed manifold. And uh, it is not difficult to observe that dimension of this, uh, of this manifold uh, equals two times the number of edges of the graph. Uh, because, well, this is just some parameter count uh, of a matrix because we have some real parameters here. Uh, we have some complex parameters here uh, above diagonal. We do not consider parameters below diagonal because they depend on the above diagonal because the matrix is Hermitian. So we have this uh, uh, above diagonal entries are complex and their number is two times uh, the number of edges of the graph. Uh, and here we have n real parameters on diagonal, but we subtract n because we fix the simple spectrum. So, so this is just a simple exercise to to, to show that dimension of this space of this manifold is twice the number of edges of, of a graph. Uh, and I will, in the following, I will always assume that lambda is taken uh, in general position. So lambda is generic enough, which means for me that uh, this, this, this is actually a smooth, uh, closed smooth uh, manifold. Uh, I, I will not speak about some precise condition because, because I don't know precise conditions in which for, for each graph, uh, which lambdas give, uh, give manifold. I don't know them, but uh, they exist. So if, if you, th there exists some uh, like open dense, as usual, open dense set of parameters lambda for which this, this is a smooth submanifold. And I assume that it is smooth in the following. Um, Okay, so uh, this is kind of the main character of my talk, uh, this, this manifold M gamma lambda. And why it is important for me is that we have a torus action on, uh, this, uh, on this manifold. Well, uh, actually we can say that there is a unitary group action on, on, this, on, 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 on the space of all Hermitian matrices uh, given just by conjugation. Uh, quite, 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 quite a natural, natural action. So, if you conjugate uh, a Hermitian matrix with a unitary matrix, then you, you again you get some Hermitian matrix, and this action uh, of U n uh, of course preserves a spectrum. So um, there is actually an action on M, M lambda, um, but we also have. Uh, 
Uh, Anton, excuse me, yeah. may I ask you, ask you a question about yes. uh, edges. So uh, do you impose some conditions on diagonal? So uh, uh, so II, is it an edge or for you or not? Uh, I, I kind of, yes, always an edge. So uh, diagonal, uh, on diagonal, we always have something. We, we, we allow something on diagonal. Uh, so, so this means that on the diagonal, we have no restriction. And if you have complete graph, then the and square, right? Uh, sorry, if we, yeah, I have some, had some problem with sound. Uh, uh, I mean that if you have complete graph, then you have no restrictions on matrix at all. That's yes, it? Exactly. Okay. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, now I just consider some standard, standard maximal torus inside UN, which is for me a torus of diagonal unitary matrices. Uh, and I consider its action on um uh, on on the matrix and if we restrict to this torus uh then the shape of the matrix uh, is preserved well i mean that uh, if we have zero at some position in the matrix uh then uh, it it is still zero after we act by a torus uh this means well th there may be some some other example okay so mm, not quite good like this. Uh, so we have zeros somewhere and they uh, they are preserved. This means that the torus action uh, preserves, so this is actually an action on uh, on the space M gamma lambda, on, on, on our manifold M gamma lambda. So, so this, this, this manifold carries some torus action, which is quite nice for me. Uh, and I'm interested in toric topology of this manifold. Uh, yeah, okay, I would like to say here that uh, here the story is not quite algebra geometric because uh, this this M gamma lambda is not uh, is not a variety. Well, it is it is a real variety, but not complex variety because it is defined inside uh, the set of uh, like Hermitian matrices and Hermitian Hermitian condition is not algebraic. So, so this is uh, not why I'm interested in, in this class of examples because it is not uh, reduced to some algebraic, to, to some complex algebraic geometry. It is kind of topological thing. Well, smooth, but nevertheless, it, 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 they, are not, they should not be considered as varieties because they are not varieties. Uh, all right, so, so we have this action and um, let me recall several uh, quite classical notions about uh, torus sections. So if we have, I consider only compact tor tori. Uh, so these are products of uh, circles. And I consider, uh, uh, I assume that this torus acts um, smoothly and effectively on, on the manifold X. Uh, essentially, uh, this Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I need to mention that uh, the action uh, that I told you on the previous slide is not actually effective because, of course, diagonal uh, scalar scalar diagonal matrices act trivially. So, uh, actually, in, in all considerations, when we count dimensions, we should remember that uh, the effective action uh, on matrices. Uh, should be, it, it, this is not the action of n-dimensional torus, but rather n minus one dimensional torus, if, if matrix has uh, size n. Um, so, so I will assume that everything is effective, but uh, it, it will affect uh, some dimension count in, in, in what follows. Um, so we have this effective action and we can consider the set of uh, fixed point sets of uh, this action, uh, I will assume in the following that this set is uh, finite and non-empty. Non so we have t fixed points uh, and th they form a discrete, some discrete set, which, which is finite because everything is compact in, in, in my universe. Um, all right, so, uh, and here are some homological things related to Toro sections. Uh, we can form a Borel construction uh, of, of, of an action, which, which is just uh, the homotopical quotient of X by a torus section. Well, this, this, this means that we multiply X with something on which 
with with something contractable on which Torus acts freely, and uh, this is called boreal construction. And we have this CR vibration, uh, which is uh, a vibration with uh, the base space, uh, the classifying space of a, uh, of a torus, and the fiber is X itself, and the total space is uh, the Borel construction. And we have a covariant cohomology of X, which is by definition the cohomology of uh, the Borel construction. And we have some spectral sequence, shared spectral sequence, which relates equivariant cohomology and ordinary cohomology of uh, of a space. Uh, so this is very classical, the basic classical invariant of uh, of a man, of many part of space with with a total section. Um, so this 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 story is quite standard, and uh, I'm going to give this general definition, but uh, actually I, I won't use it too much. Um, but let me say that X is equivariantly formal, uh, I would say in the sense of uh, Gariesky, uh, Kotwitz, McPherson, uh, X is equivariantly formal, equivariantly cohomologically formal if its uh, CR spectral sequence uh, collapses at E2. Um, uh, in some sense, equivariantly formal spaces um, are, are a class of spaces with some good homological property uh, or cohomological property of toro sections. So these are some spaces where you can, in some sense, express uh, equivariant cohomology from ordinary cohomology and vice versa in some, well, in some sense. So these are sp spaces which are most studied and these are spaces which appear quite often in algebraic geometry. Uh, but here, actually, this is a definition, and there exists actions which are equivalently formal and actions which are not equivalently formal. So uh, th th this, this is the main topic of my talk, actually. Um, and um, but but for my talk, maybe maybe if you don't if 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 you never seen this uh, definition of uh, Borel construction or semi spectral sequence, you can just use a simple crit criterion. Uh, for equivariant formality uh, under assumption that fixed points are as isolated. So if fixed points are isolated, then equivariant formality uh, is equivalent to the condition that odd degree cohomology of, uh, of, of, of the space uh, vanish. Uh, of course, I need to tell that, uh, that there are some coefficients uh, e everywhere. Uh, so th this definition should have some coefficient ring uh, in which we consider all these spectral sequences and stuff like this. And uh, here we, we also should have some coefficients here. Okay, let's say uh, that uh, you, you can think of it as, yeah, if you like, coefficients in integers in Z or maybe Z2. It, it is also fine because we, we, we have to compute something, and at, at the time that we compute something, uh, we, we require Z2 coefficients, actually, but nevertheless, the definition holds true uh, in this case as well. And uh, the main problem uh, which, which I was studying uh, is uh, which, which of these isospectral matrix, matrix manifolds are equivariantly formal, for which graphs uh, they are equivalently formal. Mm, uh, to say something uh, in advance, uh, let me say that this uh, this condition will not depend on lambda. So, so this equivalent formality will only depend on the graph, but not on the spectrum. So spectrum is always in general position, but the answer will be uh, will not depend on on spectrum. So lambda is just some lambda. I, I don't quite care about this lambda. I care about graphs. So uh, my ultimate goal is to list all graphs uh, for which this m gamma lambda is equivalently formal. That's the problem. Um, and here are some quick quick examples. Let let me go through some examples. Uh, so okay, the, the most yeah, this, this this is what was already asked about uh, complete or full graphs. Uh, they correspond just to all Hermitian matrices. And of course, if you uh, consider, we, we are considering matrices with some uh, fixed uh, simple spectrum lambda, 
Mm, and it is quite a quite a common fact, quite a common knowledge that uh, all Hermitian matrices with the given simple spectrum, uh, this set is isomorphic, well, diffeomorphic uh, to a full flag variety in Cn. So uh, this this is just uh, the variety of um, full flags in Cn. And uh, since this particular example is algebraic variety, so it is equivariantly formal because in full flag variety we have we have a decomposition into even dimensional cells. It is quite easy to see that. Well, not quite easy, but there is Brouillard decomposition. Brouillard decomposition is a decomposition in, in, into even dimensional cells. So this uh, this guy has only even degree cohomology, so it is equivariantly formal. Yeah, I, sh I should say that all, all manifolds, which uh, all of these matrix manifolds have isolated fixed points. So this, this condition holds for, for all manifolds. So there should, should be no question about uh, fixed points. Fixed points are isolated for, for, for all these manifolds and here in particular. So this is this is the basic example. So here we have equivariant formality. Full graphs correspond to equivariantly formal something. And uh, another interesting example, which is which is well studied, is uh, the manifold of all isospectral three diagonal matrices, uh, which um, was well at least uh, if, if you consider real matrices, real symmetric matrices uh, of three diagonal shape. Uh, this uh, this manifold was studied by Tomei. Uh, so this manifold is called Tomei manifold. And um, mm, well, in, in some sense, I, I, I could say that this my, my, my manifold is uh, like kind of complex or I don't know, Hermitian Tomei manifold. Uh, so this is a complex version of Tomei manifold. And uh, in, in modern terminology, in, in the terminology of toric topology, uh, we would say that this manifold, this uh, complex Tomei manifold, is is a quasi toric, quasi toric, quasi toric manifold, uh, because actually here, uh, here the, the, the torus section uh, has is half dimensional, so the manifold itself has dimension two n minus two, and the torus acting on this manifold has dimension n minus one. So this this is example of uh, complexity, what is called complexity zero action, and actually this uh, this this is a quasi toric manifold, because this as follows from the work of Tamir, the orbit space of this manifold is uh, diffeomorphic as a manifold with corners to uh, to a certain simple polyhedron to, to a certain simple polytope called permutahedron. So essentially, well, in modern terminology, this, this manifold is a quasi-toric quasi manifold over, over a permutohedron, uh, which with some uh, specific characteristic function. So this example is contained in the work of Davis Yanushkevich, of course, uh, and they, they, so they, they, they knew about it. Um, and since it is a quasi-toric manifold, uh, it is also equivariantly formal because we know cohomology uh, and equivariant cohomology of quasi-toric manifolds in general. So, so here, this example is also equivariantly formal. Uh, and kind of more general uh, thing, more general class of examples, which generalizes previous examples, uh, is the class of um, staircase-shaped matrices. Uh, so staircase shape means that we have diagonal and whenever we have some star uh, somewhere above diagonal, for example, then uh, kind of all the space between this star and diagonal uh, is also filled with uh, these stars. So we allow these entries. Mm, so it, as it is called, uh, the, the collection of, uh, of these elements which are allowed to be non-zero is uh, contiguous. Uh, so, uh, so staircase-shaped matrices uh, look like this. This is just a particular example, but you can imagine uh, other staircase shapes. And these are also studied uh, in, in, in some sense. They, they were studied by Demari, who introduced uh, Hessenberg, Hessenberg varieties. 
Um, but actually, Hessenberg variety is not quite the same thing as, as, as what is uh, written here. And uh, in, the, in the joint work with Viktor Matvievich, we noticed some similarity between uh, this regular semi-simple Hessenberg varieties and manifolds of uh, matrices of this staircase shape. For example, they have the same Betty numbers, but multiplication in cohomology and some other stuff uh, is different. Uh, any, anyway, there is some, some connection between them. So this is why we call these two classes of manifolds uh, twins. And uh, again, again to get in, in, in joint, joint work with Viktor Matvejevich, we, we noticed uh, that you can use more theory, uh, can, you, you can apply more theory to a manifold of such matrices and show that uh, they have uh, even dimensional cell structure. Well, not, not quite cell structure maybe, but uh, like those type of cells which, which appear in Morse theory. So there, there, is a, there, is, there is a Morse function on this manifold which uh, has all, um, all singular points of even index, only even in this index. So, so this, this means that there, there is no odd degree cohomology here and this is still equivalently formal. And this includes, this includes the case of all matrices and the case of three diagonal matrices as particular examples. So these were all examples of equivalent, equivalently formal examples. Let me switch to some interesting examples which are not equivalently formal. Um, and the, the, this, this example, well, this, this particular picture and this particular example I knew uh, in 2016 from uh, Yanushkevich. Uh, so th they seem to they, they seem to were inter they, they were interested in such uh, in such manifolds in manifolds like this. And what he uh, mentioned is that actually, okay, you can notice that um, the complexity of this uh, of this torus section is still zero. So again, this 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 particular uh, example has dimension six, and there is a three dimensional torus section on. Uh, on, on, on this manifold. So, so they are torus manifold, but they are not quasi toric manifold. Because uh, what uh, Gal and Yanushkevich noticed, and it uh, seems that they didn't publish it, or at least I don't know, I don't know, if, uh, I, I, I couldn't find any paper of them, but this is what they mentioned. Uh, and uh, together with Viktor Matejevich, we checked this result, we understood it. Uh, in some equivalent form, um, they uh, proved uh, that the orbit space of, of this particular six-dimensional manifold is not a simple polytope, but something with non-trivial topology. So the orbit space itself is a solid torus uh, with, with its boundary subdivided in, 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 into hexagons uh, in, in, in some manner. But, um, but this shows actually that uh, this manifold is not equivalently formal because there is uh, there is a famous theorem of Mikia and Taras about the criterion of equivalent formality for complexity zero uh, torus manifold, uh, which tells that roughly speaking equivalent formality holds whenever uh, the orbit space is something like a polytope, well, something which behaves homologically like a polytope. But this is this is not a polytope; it it, it has a hole inside. So. Uh, so in this particular case, we have not a non-equivalently formal example. Um, this is first example of non-equivalently non-equivalent formality. And uh, another interesting case is that I mentioned uh, in the beginning that we have this uh, manifold of periodic three-diagonal matrices, which corresponds to cycle cy cycle graphs. Um, and you can notice that complexity of torus section here uh, equals one. This means that uh, this manifold has dimension 2n, but uh, the acting torus has dimension n minus one. So complexity uh, equals one here. Um, and uh, I was interested in, uh, in some actions of complexity one in general. Uh, and this was a good example for me to study because this is a kind of very particular, very particular object. This, this is a very particular manifold. 
Um, and what I can say about it is that it is not equivalently formal when n is four and bigger. Of course, when n is three, uh, and n is three uh, is, is equivalently formal because n is three just gives you a full graph on three vertices. And uh, this is just a set of all matrices, which is the manifold of uh, flags in full flags in uh, C three. So uh, n equals three is not interesting. It, it, it is already studied. But uh, interesting cases start from uh, four. And how can, uh, can can you see this? What, what, what is the intuition behind this non-equivalent formality? Uh, there are several ways to see this. Why, why this manifold is not equivalently formal? Maybe the, the the easiest thing is that I computed its fundamental group. Uh, it is uh, it is not very difficult. So this fundamental fundamental group of this manifold is uh, z to the power n n minus three. So it becomes non-trivial. Uh, when n is at least four. Um, and um, this gives you some non-trivial first homology. So first homology is odd degree homology. So this means that we have odd degree homology. And so this space is not uh, equivalently formal. Uh, but there is a more tricky way to see why, why this uh, non-formality holds. Uh, I would like to mention that um, we have, uh, together with uh, Mikia, we proved that, uh, well, under certain assumptions, uh, equivalently formal uh, torus sections of complexity one um, give orbit spaces which are homology spheres. Um, this, is, this is quite interesting phenomenon uh, that if you have complexity one actions in general position and if they are equivalently formal, then the orbit space is a homology sphere. But uh, you can also look at the orbit space of this manifold. Uh, and well, I, I, I proved that this orbit space is homeomorphic to, to the product of, of a sphere and some torus. Uh, you can see that this becomes trivial when n is three. So there is no torus when n is three. But when n is at least four, there is this toric component here. And it, it is quite an interesting story about the historic component because um, it actually comes from physics. Uh, this, uh, this manifold supports not only torus action, but also the famous um, periodic toda flow or flow of the periodic toda lattice, uh, which, is, which is quite well studied. It was studied by Krichevier, for example. Uh, and, yeah, some other people, but yeah, I, I essentially used some works of um, uh, about this space. And essentially this torus that you can see here, so it, it has nothing to do with uh, the torus which acts on this manifold because we, we already killed this acting torus. But this torus is, uh, has some relation to Arnold torus of, of this dynamical system. So this torus comes from dynamical systems. It, it comes, it originates from uh, mathematical physics. Uh, so again, you can see that uh, like these two stated um, statements uh, imply that uh, this, this statement, that this, this is an example of non-equivalently formal uh, manifold. Okay, so these, these were examples which, which we know for some time, we, we knew them for some time. So they, they show that the problem itself is kind of interesting because we have formal spaces and non-formal spaces. And so it is, it is good to know if we can describe all formal spaces and all non-formal spaces. And to do this, uh, I uh, recall the definition of uh, indifference graph. This, these are actually graphs which correspond to staircase matrices. Uh, so here is a formal definition, which, which maybe I will skip. Mm, uh, this is just, just a classical notion in uh, combinatorial graph theory. You just put some collection of uh, unit intervals on, on a line, on a real line. And then if two intervals intersect, then you draw an edge between the corresponding uh, corresponding nodes, corresponding vertices of a graph. And the graphs which appear this way are called indifference graphs. And there is a statement that these graphs correspond precisely to staircase matrices. 
So you can think about these graphs as graphs corresponding to staircase mat matrices, nothing more. Uh, but there is some tricky thing about that, that uh, essentially we can uh, put labels on vertices of a graph in different ways. And uh, in, in some cases you get a graph. Uh, so for example, this line graph, uh, this path graph, uh, one, two, three, it corresponds to three diagonal matrix. But if you relabel uh, the vertices, then it corresponds to um, something which is not staircase. So this is not staircase matrix. However, uh, we can we can show that it is very easy to show that uh, this relabeling of vertices uh, doesn't change uh, anything about topology of the corresponding manifold. So the manifold of of these matrices, for example, is still equivalently formal because because these matrices are essentially the same as these matrices, and these matrices are equivalently formal. So um, it is it, th 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 this is one tricky thing. That, um, that you need to care about uh, relabeling sometimes. However, um, let me uh, go to, to the main result. Um, just, just a little notice that for any graph gamma, as I told you, this manifold M gamma lambda uh, has isolated fixed points and you can count them. There, there is always N factorial many uh, fixed points of a torus section on this manifold. Um, and this means, well, since Euler characteristic of, of a manifold equals the Euler characteristic of the set of fixed points, uh, we see that uh, the difference between uh, even dimensional Betty numbers and odd dimensional Betty numbers uh, is uh, exactly n factorial. So the total Betty number of, uh, of this manifold is at least n factorial. And you can notice that it, it is equal to n factorial if and only if uh, odd Betty numbers vanish, if and only if uh, this manifold is equivalently formal. Um, okay, so uh, th th this, this is good, good, good to notice. So there is a theorem uh, that the following conditions are equivalent, uh, that gamma is indifference graph, uh, roughly, this corresponds to staircase matrices or matrices which become staircase after some relabeling, relabeling after some uh, reenumeration re of, vert uh, of, uh, of rows and columns. Uh, so these indifference graphs are the only graphs which produce equivalently formal spaces. And these are the only graphs for which this total betting number of this manifold equals exactly n factorial. But this equivalence, equivalence of two and three is, is, is a simple exercise which is explained above. So the main result is here that uh, indifference graph, only indifference graphs uh, produce equivalently formal manifolds. And uh, again, in one direction, uh, I already explained to you that staircase matrices are equivalently formal. But the, the, the main difficulty is to prove uh, in different di direction that uh, equivalent formality implies that it is in difference graph. Okay, let me explain this. Yeah, maybe I will skip some slides because I don't have too much time. I will skip slides about uh, QR algorithm and uh, tell you a little bit how uh, how we we prove. Uh, we prove the statement. So, uh, as I told you, the most non-trivial thing is to uh, is the implication that gamma is not indifference implies that the manifold is not formal. Um, what? Uh, how, how, how how can we prove it? There is a lemma uh, which states that whenever uh, some manifold M gamma lambda is formal. And whenever we have some induced subgraph of graph gamma, then uh, the manifold corresponding to this induced subgraph is also formed. Uh, this, is, this is kind of a uh, consequence of more general fact from toric topology that whenever you have, uh, you have a equivalently formal torus section on some manifold and, and you take uh, 
some connected fixed uh, some fixed set of some subgroup some some torus subgroup um, uh, of this action then this fixed point set of a subgroup is also equivalently formal so, so equivalent formality is inherited by some good submanifolds in in some sense and this is just an instance of this more general statement which we, we can just show that induced for induced some graph uh, this manifold is uh, is a is is some sort of invariant submanifold in this graph uh, in in this manifold so if the biggest bigger manifold is formal then smaller manifold is also formal and there is some warning that what 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 is called induced graph induced graph means that you take some you pick some uh, some subset of vertices of a graph and you pick all edges of the original graph which uh, which are con contained in original graph so for example here uh, this 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 pink uh, subgraph is not induced because i uh, i picked uh, i picked these two vertices but i didn't pick uh, this edge i should pick this edge, if I if I want to get induced graph, uh, this is uh, this shows, for example, that uh, induced subgraph is something non-trivial, because well, in for example, in in, in complete graph, in in a full graph, uh, you can find any graph as a subgraph, right? But uh, not as induced subgraph. So induced subgraph is a is more strict condition. Uh, so, for example, we cannot find in, in this in this big graph we cannot find uh, an induced subgraph um, isomorphic to this star graph. So this is this this, this is not induced, but in, in, in any other collection of vertices also doesn't give you uh, this star graph. So induced graphs are. It is important here that we only consider induced subgraphs. Um, and this lemma tells us that. In some sense, we only need to consider kind of minimal non-indifference graphs. So uh, there, there are lots of uh, lots of mm, non-indifference graphs. But uh, in order to prove non-formality, we only consider we, we need to consider only some small parts which are non-indifference graphs. And luckily for us, uh, there is there exists a theorem in graph theory. Um, which describes the set of this minimal uh, of minimal non-indifference graphs. So this is a characterization characterization of indifference graphs given by Roberts. Uh, so he is a co American combinatorialist. Combinatorialist. Um, he tells that uh, gamma is not an indifference graph if and only if gamma contains uh, one of the following pieces. As induced subgraphs, uh, and here is the list of pieces. Uh, so the pieces are called claw, or also I call it star with three uh, rays. Mm, holes, which are cycle graphs uh, with with at least four um, with at least four vertices, and also these two special graphs called uh, uh, the net, and this is called three sun, but but I. Just, just call it sun. So, so these are just two specific graphs. You can, you can see that whenever, whenever one, uh, that that all, all these examples are not indifference themselves. But they are the only, the, the only pieces which prevent uh, a graph to be uh, indifferent, to be indifferent. So, if if you have something non-indifference, then it should contain pieces, some, some. Uh, some obstruction like this. So this this is the whole list of obstructions for, for being uh, indifference. Uh, so here is very nice theorem. And using this theorem, um, we, we can see that we, we, we should only prove a non-formality of the corresponding matrix space uh, only for these graphs, uh, only for graphs in this list. Uh, so if we prove uh, non-formality of, of this, 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 and this, then we prove non-formality of all non-indifference graphs. This is a very, very simple observation, um, actually. Uh, but 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 we use we we use the for, uh, this this lemma from from the previous slide that uh, this formality is inherited by induced subgraphs.
Um, so, okay, let me just mention that uh, this, this graph, uh, claw, and uh, cycles uh, with at least four vertices uh, were already mentioned in my talk. I already told you that they are not formal because uh, so, this, so for, for this graph, it is, uh, well, actually, Gao and Yanushkevich, for this graph, uh, this, this, this is my result, that they are non-formal. So uh, in some sense, the most difficult part is proved because this, this is not, not a single graph, but, but a series of graphs. And for, for all series, I proved that they are non-formal. Uh, that is nice. So, so we only need to prove non-formality of isospectral matrix space for these two strange examples. Uh, and to do this, uh, we, we have some specific approach how, how we can do this. Uh, maybe I will uh, tell it, uh, I will try to tell it uh, shortly uh, because uh, I'm a bit running off, out of time. Uh, just to tell you uh, something, mm, okay, let us consider a general uh, Toru section on some manifold. Uh, then I can consider uh, the partially ordered set of all uh, invariant submanifolds. By invariant submanifolds, I mean uh, that I take some uh, some connected connected or toric subgroup, connected closed subgroup in a torus, uh, and I take its um, fixed point uh, submanifold, and I take its connected components, and whenever this connected component uh, contains a fixed point of the original action, I call it a phase submanifold. And this defines me as some uh, discrete, discrete combinatorial structure, uh, some partially ordered set associated to a torus section, uh, a partially ordered set of all phase submanifolds. So this, this partially ordered set um, uh, contains uh, the biggest, the biggest, the largest element, the manifold X itself, and it has uh, some minimal, minimal elements which are fixed points of the, of the action. But there is some combinatorial structure inside, so there, there is a partially ordered set uh, defined for any torus section, and I denote this partially ordered set by S of X. So this is just some finite, finite poset. set. Uh, some finite partially ordered set, which is graded because there is some graded grading by ranks and stuff like this. So it is kind of very good, um, very good uh, poor set. And um, we can define a uh, skeleton of this poor set, uh, just, just cut, uh, cut all elements of this poor set of ranks, of ranks at most R. So this, this is the R skeleton of, of, of the phase poor set. Um, and we need some requirement like in GKM theory that uh, total section uh, uh, has GKM type. So we require that every uh, phase of rank one is just a, a two sphere acted on by a circle. This is this is same as in GKM theory, but in GKM theory, they also require sometimes equivalent formality, but here is no equivalent formality. So this is just GKM type. And all these matrix manifolds are of GKM type. Uh, they, they all satisfy this uh, assumption. Uh, and we proved some general theorem about uh, torus sections. We proved that whenever a torus section is equivariantly formal, uh, and OK, assume that torus dim dimension of a torus is at least 4, um, then um, we have that um, this skeleton, skeleton of uh, of the phase four set are acyclic, so their homology in degrees one, two, and three vanish. So this is something about something about combinatorics, about combinatorics of some com of some structure associated with, uh, with 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 a manifold. So we we have this three acyclicity uh, of the pole set. Um, it can be formulated in uh, for, for, for any torus sections, but but then you, you need to be careful about these numbers, like three and four that are connected. So so, so this can be modified. I just don't don't want to write the general statement here. So this is our joint work with uh, Miki and Grisha Salamadi. 
um, this is a general theorem, but we can apply it to check uh, non-formality of this space of, of, of these spaces of these two examples. We have these two graphs, net and sun. In these cases, the, the, the matrices are have size six by six, and the, the effective torus section has uh, dimension five. So some uh, dimension count tells you that. Uh, so this, this is a 12-dimensional manifold with five-dimensional torus section. Uh, so this, this, this one is 18-dimensional. So uh, we, cannot, we cannot actually compute what degree cohomology uh, just by hand of these manifolds, because, because they are too big. No, no computer can, can do this um, ju just to compute all, all like 17th degree cohomology. This is, this, this is kind of impossible. But um, we, can, we can describe this partially ordered set of uh, invariant submanifolds, just put it into a computer and compute its low degree homology, because we only need to check like homology in degrees one, two, and three. Uh, so this was done as follows. We have some abstract uh, kind of combinatorial uh, description of the pole set uh, of this phase pole set of this invariant manifold pole set of uh, of this manifold M gamma lambda for, for any gamma, uh, for any graph gamma. It is related to some other structures known in topology and combinatorics. Uh, so we did this in, in joint work with um, Viktor Matveyevich. And then uh, if we assume, if we assume that these two manifolds are uh, formal, then this would imply that they are skeleton, the skeleton, the skeleton of their uh, phase pole sets are uh, three acyclic by our previous theorem from, from the previous slide. But, but we can put, put some description into a computer and compute this homology kind of by hand. Th th this is possible, but not, not easy. Uh, so uh, we actually did this uh, with uh, Kosta Sorokin. Uh, so we, uh, we used Sage to implement all uh, all this abstract stuff to, to put uh, to put our manifold uh, to put our posets of these manifolds into a computer, and we computed uh, homology of this um, uh, of this partially ordered sets. Uh, and it was kind kind of disappointing at first uh, at first time because we computed first homology and they were trivial. So first homology is zero. We computed second homology. They were also zero. And we were uh, kind of, we thought that maybe, yeah, we, we are wrong, maybe, maybe something fails. But it is interesting that everything fails. So we, we were right, we were right that this line of reasoning works, but we can only see this uh, by computing third degree homology. So homology, so homology in degree three, in both cases, surprisingly equals to five, has, has rank five uh, for, for both these spaces which gives an abstraction to equivariant formality, according to our theory uh, with Mikia and Grisha. So this, this theorem, so this is a computational theorem, but, but it settles the point. So it settles the whole thing. So since they are not three acyclic, uh, three acyclic we proved that these manifolds, these manifolds are not equivariantly formal. And this proves the whole theorem as I told you. Uh, and this is uh, a good, good point to stop. Uh, thank you, uh, thank, thank you all very much for your attention. And Viktor Matveyevich, с днем рождения. Thank you for telling this exciting story. Any questions? Uh, Anton, may I ask a question? It's uh, Dmitry. Right. Yes, yes, uh, you told me, you told us that uh, the topology of uh, isospectral matrices, uh, Hermitian, um, in general position, it is a smooth manifold, but uh, there, there may be several components uh, of general position set open set so uh, yeah. indeed you you may take uh, you may uh, have several different uh, manifolds 
when yes, you... You, are, you are right yeah exactly you are right so there may be so uh, we so i don't know any any good example when uh, many thoughts are not not diffeomorphic or not homeomorphic for different components of, of this uh, set of uh, eigenvalues um, but they could, so they could be non-diffeomorphic or non-homeomorphic, but uh, the result tells that uh, all of them are non-formal non for non-indifference graphs. So there may be components, but, uh, but uh, in, in all components, all, all, all representatives, all manifolds are, uh, they are either all Diffeomorphic or all non-diffeomorphic. This is this, yeah. This is so. Uh, uh, it could be uh, the case when uh, even uh, they are equivalently formal, but uh, some uh, Betty numbers uh, differ. Different are different. This is maybe um, no. Uh, it, it, this 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 is not possible because let me uh, come back to this example with staircase matrices. Mm. So in this example, actually, uh, the the diffeomorphism type of manifold does not depend on lambdas. So here here is the statement that here every simple every simple spectrum gives a smooth manifold. And all these manifolds are equivalently diffeomorphic to each other. So in this particular case, uh, there is no such thing uh, as you are talking about. Ah, uh, so in staircase, in, in staircase, uh, all these manifolds are equivalently diffeomorphic. Yes. 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 In, stair exactly. in staircase. Yes. Uh, so in, in good case, in good case. When, when in good case, yes, yeah, they are all diffeomorphic, and uh, I think that. Yeah, we also proved, uh, yeah, in joint work with Viktor Matvejevich, we also proved that in this case, in, in star case, uh, not in star case, in arrowhead case, even if the size of this matrix is very big, like n times n, uh, in this case, also every spectrum gives, uh, every simple spectrum gives a smooth manifold. And they are all one, one, one of the one, same. One, yes, the same, the same. The same, so smooth manifold. Okay, so uh, it could be not so only in the case of um, not uh, st stair, not stair case, yeah. But in some in some non stair case, we know that still still they are all diffeomorphic. But in some in most cases, I just I just don't know anything about uh, yeah. about about this. They may okay. be they may may be non diffeomorphic, but I don't know example as well. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is Dmitry Timashev. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I have the following question. So, uh, in the language of Lie groups, basically what you are doing is to take um, a generic uh, a joint orbit of the unitary group and intersect it with the coordinate uh, space given by the root with some of the coordinate spaces given by the root decomposition yes exactly so so what if you take uh, another compact simple Lie group uh, do you can can you say anything uh... I, I hope i hope i hope that my phd student will do this uh i i don't know if he succeeded but at least this this looks like something which which can be answered by some student I think that yeah, I think that uh, the result will be more or less the same. Uh, that some staircase, like some Hessenberg cases, are the only uh, equivalently formal cases. And I suppose that it can be proved with uh, our, with all our techniques. Uh, I just didn't didn't do this, and hope that someone else will do this. That's okay. Thank you. Yeah, well, that's that's yeah, that's that's a good. Question. Yeah, of course, I thought, yeah, I thought about this. Okay, other questions? Anton, ты меня слышишь? Да, слышу. Во-первых, большое спасибо за твой замечательный доклад. Поверь мне, это, в самом деле, очень хороший подарок для меня. 
Хочу тебе сказать, что у нас здесь собралась ну, совершенно замечательная компания. Я вот каждый день нахожусь просто в восторге. И поверь, что очень тебя не хватает. Еще раз спасибо за доклад. Но тем не менее, у меня, у меня к тебе научный вопрос. Можешь ты показать слайд, где вот там у тебя появились гомологические сферы? Да. Ну вот все-таки надо здесь добавить, что когда у нас n равно 3, when n is 4, he start from 4, but when n is 3, we obtain the case of flag manifolds. And it is uh, our result with Svetlana that if we consider orbit space flag manifold up to action of And certainly I was happy when you show me what this result will arise the torus. But you see, uh, you mentioned it is a homologic sphere. But for topologists, it is a very, very important. Not mention homology spheres, but mention it about fundamental group. What you can say. It's not enough to say it is homology sphere. What kind of fundamental group arise here? Uh, okay, the answer is, okay, this is a kind of silly answer. So this doesn't give any good insights. But anyway, I will tell it that uh, fundamental group of this orbit space uh, is isomorphic to fundamental group of X itself. So if X is simply connected, So if you add some uh, some assumption that X is simply connected, then its orbit space will also be simply connected. So by Poincaré conjecture, the orbit space will be just homeomorphic to a sphere, not just homology yes. sphere. Yes, yes. I, I'm sure that it must be uh, no, follow the Poincaré problem We obtain not homotopy, but homeomorphic to sphere. But certainly, when you uh, show what such kind of result, certainly you must mention it that it is not only homology sphere. It is a fundamental because maybe it is a standard sphere up to homeomorphism, of course. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In most, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. In most cases, it is just a standard sphere. Right. I don't know. I don't know any good examples uh, of such orbit space which are homology spheres, but not ordinary spheres. I don't know. I think so. I don't know, Anton. Anton. I think so. But when topologists look homology sphere, immediately rise the question: What kind of fundamental group? You yeah, see, I thank, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks again for the your, your beautiful talk. Thank you. Let me also ask a quick question. Uh, how long did it take to compute your basic numbers? Yeah, maybe Costa, maybe Costa remembers better. Maybe one, one or two days, as I remember. I remember that we first tried to compute like honest homology with Z coefficients, and then we just couldn't compute them. Even there were problems even with degree two uh, homology. They were computed like uh, two days or something. Then we just, uh, we thought that it will not. Yeah, I was very far away from the microphone. I can answer yeah. that question. Um, it took a lot of time. By the way, we unpacked not only our computers, but HSC's uh, supercomputer, and I worked really hard on trying to parallelize these things, and I didn't succeed finding any library even in C uh, which could help to make parallel computations of uh, the homology groups, because, well, it's hard to imagine how would you do in general sense.
uh, the parallel computing. Yeah, I, I think I, I think that uh, this particular computation was carried not on HSC cluster. It was carried on uh, our, our lab uh, computer because we had some problems with porting porting all this Sage stuff to to this cluster. As I remember, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Um, it was actually on our lab's computer. Um, and speaking of computation time, it took about several hours for first homology, a couple of days for second, and endless time for uh, third homology. No, not <laughs> it, it, it ended, it ended, just don't... No, it didn't. No, it didn't, no, it, but it did. that... It computed, it computed this, uh, this third Betty number. So, yeah. yeah, and after that, we tried it on Z2, and it was indeed several days. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we had we had some alternative way to prove non-formality using GKM theory. We, 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 we there, there is an, an alternative way to compute things. So we, we can compute like equivariant cohomology using GKM description. So we also did this, and it it required a bit less time, and it kind of supported our results in, in some independent way. So both both proofs are using computers, but uh, one, one of them. Uh, is kind of more straightforward uh, from GKM theory, uh, and also yes. we 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 assumed that uh, we have equivalent formality. Then GKM theory theorem holds, and then we computed something and proved that there is a contradiction to Poincaré duality, as I remember, something like that. Mm -hmm. it, it also took 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 a day or two days, but uh, it, it a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, it was easier, definitely. Okay. Any other questions? So no questions. So let's thank Anton again. And this was the last talk for today. See you tomorrow.